Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Simplify Device and PC Management with Windows Intune. My name is Laura Albini and I will be your moderator. If you're having any issues with audio or seeing the presentation, please request assistance through the chat panel. All lines will remain muted until we get to the Q&A portion. If you're having difficulty seeing the slides, you can use the full screen feature in the bottom right corner or the top right corner if you're using Link 2013. You may submit questions at any point during the webinar and we will address them during the Q&A. Today's slides and webinar recording will be sent to all attendees tomorrow. Make sure to stay until the end of the webinar for your chance to win a Microsoft Surface RT. We're going to go ahead and get started. Today our speakers are Kevin Cook, Microsoft Client Solution Specialist for Intune, and Kirsten Becker, IntelliNet Principal Consultant Infrastructure Solutions. On today's webinar, Kevin will talk through what is Intune and provide insight into licensing. Then Kirsten will walk us through a demo of Intune and then talk about how to get started with Intune in your organization. We will then wrap up with Q&A. Okay, for those of you not familiar with IntelliNet, we are a management consulting and Microsoft-centric technology services firm. A lot of other firms take technology first approach. However, at IntelliNet, our solutions begin with a strategic approach. We take into consideration change management, training, and overall organizational readiness beyond the technology implementation. This year, we're actually celebrating our 20th year in business. Our consultants have an average of over 16 years of experience, and we have several Microsoft MVPs in-house. We have served over 900 clients throughout the U.S. and abroad, and have worked with Microsoft online services since its inception. In 2012, we were selected as a finalist by Microsoft for a staggering seven worldwide, regional, and district awards, and we were recognized as Microsoft 2012 Southeast Partner of the Year and honored with the Southeast Customer Satisfaction Excellence Award. So before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and put a few polls up there. So just want to get a sense of how familiar everyone is with Intune. So if you can take just a minute to um, fill this out. This is anonymous. Okay, great. So it looks like um, we have a lot of folks that are not familiar. Nobody that has already purchased. Okay, well good, glad that uh, everyone's on the line to hear more about it. We'll give you another second or so. Okay, great, so now we'll go to our second poll. So why are you considering Intune? Now I know there might be multiple business drivers, um, but if you could just pick your primary one. Okay, great. Looks like uh, simplified management is definitely the top business driver there. Okay, great. All right, so um, with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Kevin. Thank you, Laura. All right, well, before we drill down into the details of uh, Windows Intune, um, first I'd like to take just a minute on one slide to talk about the consumerization of IT and how Intune plays in there. Consumerization of IT is on everybody's mind today. Uh, employees are bringing their own PCs and phones and tablets to work, uh, wanting to use social networking apps like Facebook or LinkedIn on these devices, and that introduces a number of security and management challenges for corporate IT departments. Many of these devices are running on Windows, but there are tons of other devices such as iPads and iPhones, uh, Android tablets, etc. So we're going to focus on Windows Intune and how it can help you across these four key areas of the consumerization of IT. In the first pillar you see here um, with the Windows-based devices that people love, obviously Microsoft has some great devices out there, Surface, Windows, Phone, 8, a whole bunch of them, but like I had mentioned before, you know, there's tons of iPads and iPhones and Android and, and you name it out there. 
and uh, we'll talk about how Windows Intune can help you do all of those mobile device management uh, components. The next, uh, the next pillar that we've got there talks about keeping these devices um, secure and manageable. So obviously, uh, Intune is our cloud-based management solution, so we're going to talk about the management side, but also how we can keep those devices up to date and secure and antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-malware engine in, inside of Intune. On the best uh, productivity, getting being able to deliver all of these great apps uh, packages down to those different devices. <clears throat> and uh, the fourth pillar uh, with the uh, modern application development, you notice there there's Windows Azure mentioned there. Windows Intune uh, can co-mingle with Windows Azure for cloud storage and, and be able to keep all of your packages and the, the uh, programs that you set up to be distributed out to your endpoints uh, store those inside of Windows Azure uh, storage as well. So that being said, let's focus a little bit here on what is Microsoft Windows Intune. If, if you're familiar with System Center Config Manager, think of Windows Intune as SCCM or System Center Config Manager in the cloud. It does all of the things that you would expect from Config Manager, such as hardware inventory, software inventory, patch management, um, application distribution, antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-malware, remote assistance of, of other people's computers and such. Um, it does all of this without you having to spend months of planning out complicated architecture, uh, buying and configuring hardware, uh, storage, servers and such, and then having to maintain and, and continually manage those servers. So there's no more backing up uh, your, your config servers. There's no more patching those servers. There's no more weekend maintenance or when Microsoft comes out with a, a, a critical update to uh, Windows Server, SQL Server, or uh, System Center Config Manager, uh, no more of you having to come in and, and uh, apply those patches and, and bounce those servers. We take care of all of those machines up in the cloud for you. Uh, in geo-redundant data centers, so uh, spread across uh, the United States and the world, depending on where you're located. So we, we do all of that for you, all with a financially backed, uh, guaranteed uptime. Another huge plus of Windows Intune is that being cloud-based, its upgrade timeline is every six months. And again, we do the upgrades. So you never find yourself uh, running an old version of the software um, or having to do intensive planning to get to the latest and greatest new versions. So, you know, with, uh, with uh, System Center Config Manager, we went from 2003 to 2007, so that was a four-year uh, time frame between major upgrades, and then from 2007 to 2012, so that was a five-year uh, time frame between major upgrades. With Windows Intune in the cloud, it, again, it's every six months that you're getting major revisions and we just turn those features on. You're getting them in the cloud. There's nothing that you have to do, no regression testing, no uh, planning and maintenance, or, oh, my gosh, we just got ourselves up to System Center 2007, and now you guys are coming out with 2012. I've got to get my guys off of these projects and onto that. All of that stuff just kind of goes away uh, by us taking care of that for you in the cloud. So let's talk a little bit about additional um, uh, mobile device management. We mentioned that on uh, the previous slide. Um, so with every user that you put into Windows Intune, you get four additional devices uh, that you can manage for each of those users. So if you, uh, let's use myself as an example. If I'm enrolled into Intune and I have my primary laptop here, but I also have an iPad, an iPhone, um, an Android tablet and a Microsoft Surface tablet, uh, all of those devices can be managed through Intune at no additional cost, up to five total for each user. So that's a huge consideration if your organizations are doing um, uh, bring your own device components, if you're letting people bring in iPads or Surface devices or letting them buy their own phones, but you want to have some maintenance and management and control over those devices. Uh, for help desk reasons, for for uh, for many different reasons that are out there. Uh, 
Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is simplifying the management across platforms. So up until this point, we've kind of talked about Intune as a cloud uh, cloud only component. But if you've already got System Center on prem, uh, Microsoft Windows Intune integrates seamlessly into that. So you can get that single pane of glass um, uh, management experience where you've got a single admin console where you as your IT department go into that console and you might use System Center 2012 for on-prem uh, management of servers on-premise or desktops that never leave the corporate uh, uh, four walls of the corporation but for the laptops and the mobile users and the mobile devices and smartphones and such, maybe you have Intune collecting all of that data and pumping that down to uh, System Center 2012. So you're able to use one console to see all of that and think of Intune as the agent that collects everything uh, for those devices that are leaving the firewall or whatever devices you, you deem necessary. Um, but you're using that single pane of glass to, to do all of that. And lastly, I'd like to, before the demos, uh, just talk a little bit about the pricing. So we, um, as of December 1st, we uh, have changed the pricing model for the better for the customers, in, in a much better uh, entry point here. We now have two, it's a pretty simple way to get in tune. Uh, we price it based on whether or not you own System Center Config Manager in a, in a core CAL or an eCal. If you own System Center Config Manager already, then you get Windows Intune for approximately $4 a user a month. It, it depends on, uh, you know, your seat count and such, uh, what, what your select level is with Microsoft. But uh, I think it's 380 something a month. Uh, so we give you credit for already owning System Center, and you pay the lower amount. If you don't own System Center on-prem, then you pay approximately, it's $5 and change, so around $6 a user a month. But then we also give you the rights to System Center Config Manager. So either way, if you buy Intune, uh, you either already have the rights to Config Manager or you get the rights to Config Manager. And then at that point, Microsoft doesn't care whether you do it all in the cloud, all on-prem, or any mixture of, the, of a hybrid model uh, where you do some people in the cloud, some groups in the cloud, some things in, uh, on the corporate uh, system center config manager side. And I should mention that um, endpoint protection is covered in this as well. We, we briefly touched on that earlier. But um, with, uh, with if you have a core cal, you have what we call what used to be FEP or for, forefront endpoint protection, which is now called SCEP or system center endpoint protection. Uh, with Windows Intune, you also get the cloud-based version of that. It uses the same exact engine that Skep uses. Uh, it's uh, the cloud version of that. So the same protection that you get on-prem for anti antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-malware, you get through the cloud engine as well. So um, with that, I'm going to turn the, the uh, control over to Kirsten for the demos. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kevin, for all the great information on Intune. Now to show some of the functionality that you just mentioned. All management tasks take place in the online console that you see here, hopefully. There is, um, I always end up, begin on the system overview tab, and the system overview tab will give you notice of anything happening on that's planned like a service update, you'll notice the first week of April there's going to be an Intune update. And I need to understand that because some of my machines may need to be rebooted. Um, it'll also tell you what types of alerts are happening in your environment. It appears that I need to approve some updates. In addition, it gives us an overview of the system status. So all of our agents look good and all of our machines are getting their policy, nothing's unhealthy, everything's checked in recently. In addition, you're going to find the summary of your environment. You see we have four computers enrolled and also four mobile devices. So we'll talk a little more about iPads and Windows Surface in a minute. So let's check on our groups or our updates. 
Updates are patches, and this is where you manage all of the patches and how they get deployed onto the machines. Um, the way you figure out which patches you want to have installed here in the administrative console, you have updates, and you can choose which updates you would like. For example, if I don't want to update the Bing toolbar, I would uncheck this box. In addition, you can decide if you just want critical updates to come down, or if you would like critical and security, or if you would like everything. There's also an automatic approval option. I like this idea for maybe my test machines or my pilot group. You see I've created a rule called critical updates. What that means is for absolutely everything from the Microsoft catalog, if it's a critical update, I'm automatically going to put that to my test group. So that way I know those will immediately get pushed out and then we can do some testing before I would approve it for the rest of my environment. So back to our overview and our updates. So I see we have a number of updates here. We have a choice to approve them individually, or if I don't want to go through and approve them individually, I can come in and approve them all. And I want them all to go to all computers. And I think I'm going to give my approval as a required install. A note here, if you're going to be installing patches, your choice is a required install or not to install. There is no optional. Or, of course, you can uninstall. And we're going to go ahead and say, I want that done as soon as possible. So now, all of my updates have been approved. And on my Overview tab, you'll notice that I have nothing that needs new approvals, but there's some that need additional. Let's look a little bit at the groups. In SCCM, you can pretty much just push software um, via machine. Here in Intune, we have a choice to push via user. And the users are where we manage all of our mobile devices. You'll notice that we've uploaded, we have directory synchronization with our on-site Active Directory. and we have uploaded everyone, and you'll notice we can search users. Maybe if we search for me and see how many devices I have. Gosh, I have five. Huh, I have two primary PCs. Whoops, I think that's in violation of license. Sorry, Kevin. But I've also got two iPads and a Surface. And this is where we can manage these devices. You'll notice that I can retire or wipe a device here from this console knowing a user has left the company or has um, or the device is gone. We also have remote tasks that we can perform on that user's machine. So you, it's very easy to search either by a computer name or a user. And we also have that option here in all computers. And then you can just manage those devices individually. And when we, deep, when we dive into those computers, you'll notice there's a lot of information on each computer, including the updates it's received, if there are any malware is, issues, any alerts that we have set up to go off from that machine, and a pretty thorough hardware inventory. In addition, there is a software inventory. So we know exactly what's installed on each machine. We also have some policy settings, and that's not group policy, but um, Intune policy, and we'll cover that a little more in a minute. So let's talk a little bit about software. One of the primary functions of Intune is to push software. There's two different um, tabs here in the, soft, in the software area. First, you can see the installed software, exactly how many machines have each piece of software in your environment. Second, you can get your managed software. These are packages that have actually been uploaded. And we're going to go ahead and upload a piece of software. And since we're federated, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my IntelliNet credentials. And once we get into the upload panel, 
it's very, very easy to import software. We're going to create a package. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and do the uh, Remote Desktop Connection Manager. Publisher is Microsoft. And we can also put in a URL of some more information about where that, what that piece of software does, and even an icon. Then you can choose your requirements. The requirements are around what architecture this particular piece of software can be installed on, also what operating system. And we're going to leave that at any and any. Now this is very important. Just like SCCM, any of your packages that are going to be pushed through Windows Intune must be silent and not have a reboot. So we're going to go ahead and put that MSI, MSI command line QN in to make sure that that will install properly. And then we're going to go ahead and upload, upload that software. Now if you go back in the console, you'll notice if you have more than one person working, you can see when software is being uploaded. And if I refresh again, it's, it's already completed. So we'll close out here. Now once your software is uploaded, you need to manage the deployment. And I mentioned that we would have, we can either push by user or by device. If we go ahead and push by user, that means it will be available. Not required, but available. And of course, you can't put a deadline. That makes it available in our um, IntelliNet company portal on the desktop. So let's take a look at what the Intune client looks like. This is a Windows 8 machine. And you'll notice that we have Windows Intune endpoint protection. Windows Intune Center, and a company portal installed. If we go ahead and look at the Windows Intune Center, you'll notice that we have an option to install updates. And this is what the client looks like. And this will say, hey, we need to install the Microsoft Silverlight update. So we can just go ahead and install that. Also, there's a link over to the company portal. And this is our company portal. Here your users can manage all their own devices. Now their main device, their main computer, they can't manage except to maybe give it a friendly name of uh, Scooby-Doo or whatnot. <laughs> but for all of their devices that they personally put in, they have the option to give it a friendly name or remove that device. So your users have the capability to take out their own devices. And look. The Remote Desktop Manager has shown up. So I have two different machines, um, and I'm going to go ahead and install the Remote Desktop Connection Manager on this machine, and that install is going to go ahead and run in the background. While we take a look at what the Company Resources tab looks like, here's where you can give your end users your support information, whether that's call the help desk or call our IT mail manager, Alan, or send an email, or better yet, send it to your ticketing portal or your SharePoint for them to do some self-help. So I think our install should have completed by now. Oops. And hmm. I am, there we go. So that is installed and let's, it's not presenting. Um, okay. So it looks like we have a little technical difficulty here. It stopped presenting. Apparently I am out of the meeting. So let me go ahead and join back in. And continue with the secondary monitor. And can we see it again? So, good, excellent. Sorry about that. So let's see, has our remote desktop manager? No, has not finished installing yet. Okay, well sometimes that just takes a minute. So I'll go ahead and go back into the in Tune Console. And we can go ahead and take a look at the licensing. So for licensing, you are able to upload any of your Microsoft Volume license agreements. And then as machines sign up for the service, 
those um, licenses will be debited from the license pool. And the same thing is true for other agreements. Um, I haven't managed to upload any into this test demo environment, but I just wanted to mention that. And let's talk a little bit more about policy. So this is not group policy. This is not, hey, we can do granular management of our machines. It's just policy that, that is around the Intune agent and endpoint protection. So if you choose to have endpoint protection installed on your devices or on your PCs, this is where you would manage that. And also, if you already have a Symantec or an online the system center um, on-prem endpoint protection or McAfee, then the Intune agent will not install the Intune endpoint protection. You can set what you, whether you want real-time protection. You can figure out what your scan schedule is, what all the options are, and also how your endpoint protection acts um, as default, as well as what files to exclude. Also, you can decide when updates are put in on your machine, how often it checks, and if you allow your logged on user to restart. You can also restrict users' ability to link themselves to computers. And for folks that are on a low bandwidth situation, you can determine how, how much bandwidth the package transfer takes. Now for your mobile devices, you have the option to implement a password, also, whether on your Windows RT devices, whether you can have a picture password or whether you just require a PIN. You can show whether an iPad can, or an iPhone will allow the camera and or web browser. And also, if they can back up to the iCloud services. You can determine whether users can download email and if they synchronize and if you require um, encryption on the device. Now, if we put exchange, the Exchange ActiveSync connector on, we could also manage the Android um, devices, both tablets and phones, and it has a little bit more dynamic management capabilities. So let's talk a little bit about reporting. So Intune has a really robust reporting system. There are a lot of both canned and custom reports that you can create from the inventory data that's pulled into the system. So let's say I wanted to know all critical updates that were installed on all devices in our environment. And then I would just run this report. It would say, hey, we've got all of these updates that were critical that were installed on these particular machines and that failed on apparently none of them. You can then export this as either an HTML file or a CSV file for analysis in a different program. You can also look at software. So let's say that I want to know how many um, Adobe installs I have or and if I want to know how many Adobe installations there are, I can go here and then view the report. And we'll notice that we have two Adobe products installed on two machines. The same thing's true with computers. And I have a couple of or a saved report here because I wanted to know how many machines I had with memory over two gigs. So all I did, all devices, all operating systems and all chassis types with physical memory greater or equal to two, met or two gig. And then I went ahead and viewed the report. So as you see, there's a lot of different reporting options available with a lot of detail. So let's talk a little bit about endpoint protection. Um, as you mentioned, the forefront endpoint protection is available both here in Windows Intune and through Office 365. I think on there it's called FOPI, and here it's called Intune Endpoint Protection. And you can set up any kind of alerts um, around 
endpoint protection or monitoring. We really haven't gone through alerts yet, so let's take a look at how those are set up. So here, if we had, if we wanted to create an alert on endpoint protection, we would go into the administration tab, go to alerts and notifications, and configure the alert types. So there's a number of different alerts that we have available that can be enabled and can then go to any of the recipients. Now you'll see we have a couple different recipients. So let's say that I'm going to get notified if a duplicate IP exists on the on the uh, network. So our notification rules for critical alerts, we would go ahead and enable that. And then we would say, hey, it's awesome. Kirsten gets all the alerts. Oh, boy. So that's how you set up your alerting. And let's check back on our remote on our Windows 8 machine and see if our software has installed yet. OK. Oh, great. Look, it's there. Fantastic. So now we've got the Remote Desktop Connection Manager installed. So that concludes our demo of Windows Intune. And let's go back over to our presentation and talk about how to get started. So now that you've seen all the exciting features of Intune, what do you do next? We offer a strategy assessment and proof of concept for Windows Intune. This offering includes a day of discovery. Through interviews, we will evaluate your existing tool set, including provisioning systems, patching, and mobile device management tools. We'll review your bring your own device, remote management, application distribution and compatibility, as well as endpoint protection strategies. Then day two and three, we will present the Microsoft Intune proof of concept. This is an isolated virtual environment with full functionality that will demonstrate all of the Windows Intune features and concepts. For EA customers with software assistant assurance, this Proof of concept may be funded with DPS days. And finally, on day four, we'll wrap up the engagement with a meeting and present the endpoint management strategy roadmap. This roadmap includes the current endpoint management strategy and how we will roll out Intune, as well as other considerations for endpoint and mobile device management. Okay, Laura, to you for Q&A. Great, thank you. Yes, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute the lines. Um, and we do have a lot of uh, questions that have come through on the chat panel. All guests have been unmuted. You will now rejoin the meeting. Okay, great. So the first question that has come in, uh, can I also manage Windows 7.5 phones and Windows 8 mobile devices or just Windows 8 phones? Oh, and Kevin, it looks like you had a answer for that. Hey guys, sorry, I'm talking and I was still muted. Uh, so it, we can do, of course, all of the uh, i386 type platform. We do Windows 8, uh, Windows Phone 8, Windows RT, Android, and iOS. But we can we don't go backwards to the seven phones. Uh, looks like another question from the SCCM console. Can you specify a security rule that allows access to Intune collectively collected devices only? Kirsten, do you know? A couple people answered yes. To that. I don't know that for a fact. Do you know that? So, from I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. From the SCCM console, can you push a policy saying that some machines are just Windows Intune? Is that the question? Yes, absolutely. If you have tied in your SCCM and Windows Intune consoles. Yeah, the way I read it was that if you, um, or if, uh, if Richard is unmuted, you, maybe he can verify this, but the way I read it is if Intune's collecting it and you have that single console, um, are you able to see at a glance at that single console whether or not System Center on-prem collected the info 
or Intune from the cloud connected, collected the info at a glance, or do you have to drill down? And, uh, that, that would be part of it. Uh, this is Richard. Actually, I was curious about, um, in terms of the security roles that you would set up, you know, to create like a WSUS administrator or an endpoint administrator, I'm just thinking the idea of, you know, like a, you know, a mobile device administrator that would have access to the Intune portion of the console, but nothing else. Oh, so, so you're more saying for, for help desk folks, if you can do some um, management, you absolutely can do attendant administrators, um, so give some other folks right to different parts of your environment. If that's, is that the right question or answer? <laughs> I believe so, yes. Yeah. You know, because that's one of the features of SCCM 2012 is you can compartmentalize mm -hmm. roles you know, based on what, you know, you, you assign, you know, people or resources to do. And I just want to know if that was, if this was, that could be done in the same, the same way you can do other roles where you just create like, maybe like, you know, we call it, we'd call it like a tablet administrator or something and they would have access to that. Sure. So if he, if you're going to set up a tenant, a tenant administrator in Windows Intune, you can, and they can just access that smaller portion of your domain. So the answer is okay. yes, but it's not as granular as SCCM, as the SCCM console. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, what process should you check on the client workstation to see if it's running? Is there a CCM log file to troubleshoot? So I think, honestly, uh, that, that question was, um, typically it's, it pops up in the client saying that there's a failure. Um, there is not the same set of log files, and off the top of my head right this second, I can't remember what the log file name is off the client, but yes, there is a log for software install. And yes, QN is to suppress the GUI, but if the GUI is up, that will prevent it from installing properly. And I did not mean no restart, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, what's the maximum number of users Intune can manage? Um, Windows Intune can manage 5,000 users, um, but if you have it integrated with SCCM, that's up to 100,000. Right. How do you force a mobile device to conform to ActiveSync policies through Intune? For example, we want every device to follow a policy. Once the device connects to email, does it automatically get added to Intune for management? So the Intune connector, or sorry, the Exchange connector hooks into Intune the same way and, and you can manage those devices with the same things as uh, the same tools in ActiveSync. So yes, it'll push the policy down. For example, um, you need to have a password or you cannot download e or attachments or um, you cannot access internet. And I think we ran through some of the, the mobile policy settings for Intune. Once you have ActiveSync, they're a little more granular. Um, can, uh, can they manage Windows XP machines? So yes, so long as they're Service Pack 3, um, you will, we will be able to manage those through Intune right up until, what is it, uh, a April 8th, 2014? April 8th, that's right. <laughs> Are we going to have a countdown party, guys? <laughs> Uh, does this provide remote access to do end user support across all platforms? So using Easy Assist, which is built into the operating system, the end user can request support from the IT administrators. So yes, it leverages existing um, remote control features that are part of the OS. Okay, uh, can you talk about the features in terms of managing iOS devices, wipe, install, remove, update apps, security policies, push documents, company app store? Mm -hmm. So yes, um, for iOS devices, initially the, the way that that gets set up, you put a certificate, um, an, an Apple certificate up into your Intune environment. You have to renew that every year. Um, and then you can sideload apps, you can send things to the app store. One, or if you send a link, for example, if you wanted to put Adobe Reader on an iOS device, you would set it up as a link in the, uh, in the software push area, 
and I probably, I don't know if I have that open for demo. Anyways, you can set it up as a link, and then that will link over to the Apple Store and just install, the, install it from there. You can also sideload applications through in iOS. Plus, if a device is stolen, you can either, or, or misplaced, or if a user leaves the company, you can remove it from, you can remove it from the Intune service, which just removes it and any company applications from the device, or you can wipe the device, which will wipe everything off of it. Um, let's see, security policies. I think I ran through what was there as far as security policies, and again, if you do have the Exchange Connector, you can get a little more granular with that, including how long to keep email on the phone and, and some other, other things. Um, and let's see, to push documents, um, I'll have to find out and follow up on, on pushing a document down. I'm assuming it would be the same as uh, any other package. And again, publishing to the company app store is the same thing. You can either push through the Apple store or through the company app store. There's an app store link that gets installed on the iOS device or a company portal that gets installed on the iOS device that you can then use to push software, um, update information, and that sort of thing. Okay, great. Do we have any final questions? Okay. Well, with that, we are going to uh, go ahead and wrap things up. Um, our survey is now open, um, so make sure to complete it in the next hour for a chance to win a Microsoft Surface RT. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the survey in the chat panel so you guys can go ahead and click from there. Um, as I said, the survey will close at 4 o'clock p.m. today, and we will announce the winner tomorrow in our follow-up email that will also include the recording of today's webinar. If you're interested in signing up for the Intune Strategy Assessment and Proof of Concept, make sure to do so by April 19th. All organizations that sign up will be entered into a second drawing for another Microsoft Surface RT. Today's webinar is part of our cloud series. Many of you joined our Office 365 webinar in December, and we hope that you'll join us again in May to learn about Windows Azure. Thanks again for your time this afternoon, and have a great day.